Let's see how that all works out. So, in other words, I'll be the only politician in American history not allowed to speak because of our corrupt system. Sir, you're not allowed to speak on the show. In other words, I'll come here and I'll say, hi, everybody. Listen, uh, not allowed to speak. Uh, please vote for me, New Hampshire, if you would. Bye. And all I can say is the never-ending witch hunt continues, and we have exposed so much. Nobody's ever thought I have exposed so much. It's been incredible. But do not fear. We will win bigger and better than ever before. They rigged the presidential election in 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election in 2024. We're not going to allow it to happen. We're not going to allow it to happen, New Hampshire. And you're such an important state. You know, you're relatively small. You're so important politically. And you know, I kept Iowa and you in those first positions. Please remember that because I thought there was a great, beautiful tradition to it. They wanted to move you way back in the line, and I said, nope, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. You are in the position. You'll always be there as long as I have anything to say about it. Joe Biden is the most incompetent and corrupt president in U.S. history. The Biden crime family was taking in money from China, Ukraine, Russia, all these places he has to deal with, and so many others. And now, whenever more Biden corruption is exposed, his henchmen charge me with a crime. You know, when they get something on Biden, oh, let's indict, let's add on another indictment to that stupid indictment that we filed. Let's add on another one, because that takes the news cycle. Unfortunately, I get disproportionate publicity. So they indict me. <laughs> He's right, great balls. But so they indict me. So when they want to keep something, they say, oh, man, they got Hunter again. You know, at some point, Joe is going to have to say, you know, the sun thing just isn't working out. Do you agree? The sun thing. The sun thing's not working out too good. It, all he had to do is pick up the laptop. Didn't the guy call him like 11? Pick up your laptop. Pick up your laptop. I, I wonder where that cocaine came from. What happened? Boy, that was the quickest investigation I've ever seen. You know, somebody told me it could be wrong. I always say that that way you can never get sued, you know. Somebody told me it could be wrong. I'm sure it's wrong. But in that little cubicle where it was, there would be normally thousands of fingerprints, you know, people meet them. There were none. It was clean. It was so clean. It's the kind of place I'd like to be, actually, clean. I like cleanliness. But it's called a cover-up. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, fascists indict me, I consider it a great, great, great badge of honor. I do. I do. Because I'm being indicted for you. I am being indicted for you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. But never forget, our enemies want to stop us because we are the only ones who are going to stop them. It takes brave people to stop these radical lunatics. It takes brave people. They're sick. They're sick people. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. That's what's happening here. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just standing in their way, and I always will stand in their way, I promise. And if you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over, and America will be a free nation once again, because we do not have a free nation. And from my first day in office, I will appoint a special prosecutor to study each and every one of the many claims being brought forth by Congress, and they're doing a good job. Jamie Comer, Jim Jordan, all of them. Concerning all of the crooked acts, including bribes from China and many other countries, all these foreign countries sending money into the coffers of the Biden crime family, we will have a special prosecutor. And now they'll come after me even a little harder, but I don't know how many more. How much harder can they do it? I should have four by sometime next week. I never heard. You know, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. We never studied indictment. We never studied arrest. We never studied prison. These are sick people we're dealing with. It's often said that Republicans don't fight hard enough. 
And I happen to agree. But they never said that about Trump. And you have some Republicans that are fighting very hard now, I have to tell you. And But you're going to see that on my first day in the presidency. The deep state is destroying our nation, but the tables will turn very quickly, and we will destroy the deep state. And we got rid of a lot. It didn't look like it, but we got rid of a lot. But we're also fighting like hell and also doing a great job in holding back China, holding back North Korea, Kim Jong-un. All of a sudden, that problem stopped. Uh, Russia would have never gone in. China would not be talking about Taiwan right now. We did a great job. I mean, when you think about it, we did a job that uh, very few people have done on top of the greatest economy ever, strongest border ever, all of these things. And we had this stuff hanging over our head all the time. That's all they do. They're the party of misinformation and disinformation. And just Four short years, we already achieved more than any administration, probably in the history of our country. We delivered the largest tax cuts and regulatory cuts by far in history. And likewise, we built the greatest economy in history. We achieved energy independence and would have shortly gained energy. We were going to be dominant energy dominance for the first time ever. We had gas prices at $1.87 a gallon. After years of bitter betrayals, you really have high prices here. Your electric costs are about the highest in the country. Good luck with your electric cars, everybody. How, how dumb is that? And they're sitting all over the place. Nobody wants them. How crazy. Let somebody, if you want an electric car, you buy an electric car. But you got to have choice, choice, just like you're going to have school choice. After years of bitter betrayals of New Hampshire workers, I ended the disaster known as NAFTA. The worst trade deal ever made. Replace it with the USMCA, the best trade deal ever made. In fact, it's such a good deal that Mexico and Canada are now trying to renegotiate it with the Biden administration. And I say, don't let them do it. We suffered with that crazy NAFTA for years. Everyone said I'd never be able to terminate it because I had to terminate it through Congress. We got to terminate it through Congress, NAFTA. We got the USMCA. It's the best trade deal ever made. It's unbelievable. Much better for us than it is for Mexico and Canada, as you can tell. I stood up to China like no administration has ever done before, bringing in billions and billions and billions of dollars pouring into our Treasury, when no other president had gotten literally 10 cents, not one penny they got from China. China had us uh, figured out really well. I gave our farmers in Great New England lobstermen $28 billion from the massive tariffs I received from China. And DeSantis opposed the deal, by the way. He opposed it. Just to put it out there quickly, he also opposed Social Security. I don't know if you know, he wanted to decimate Social Security, Medicare, and Social Security. He wanted to bring the minimum age up to 70. So I don't know if you know that, but... And remember one thing about a politician. When that's his original thought, that's where they go back to. They may come up here and talk to you, uh, oh, I love Social Security. No, he voted three times to, ter to terminate and decimate it. We appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. And how about the ruling last week where they say that if you get great marks, you go to college first. There's no more crazy discrimination and other things. Nobody thought that was going to happen. And last year, those justices ruled to end Roe v. Wade. They ruled to end Roe v. Wade. Now, I have to tell you, we have to talk about it because it, you know, energizes the other side a little bit, and it's not good. But just so you understand, just so you understand it, how to talk about it. Now, pro-lifers have a tremendous power to negotiate. You had no power whatsoever. They could kill the baby at any time they wanted. They could kill the baby whenever they wanted. This moves the issue back also to the states, where all legal scholars want it back in the States, but you have tremendous power to negotiate. Like Ronald Reagan, before me, I support the three exceptions. You have to go with your heart, but I support for rape, incest, and for the life of the mother. I do that, and a lot of people do. Big portion do. And remember this, the Democrats, though, we're not the radicals. They're the radicals because they're willing to kill babies in their fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth month, and even after birth. So, if you remember that, if you remember that, and the exceptions, in my opinion, are important, 
in my opinion, but you have to go with your heart. We did something that was amazing. For 50 years, they've tried to get it out. They wanted it back in the States. All legal scholars on both sides wanted it back in the States. But you now have a tremendous power to negotiate something that's going to be good and going to be lasting. And it was a tremendous achievement, a tremendous achievement. But just remember, they were the radicals. They try and make you into radicals and uh, monsters. They were the radicals because they were killing babies in fifth, sixth, seventh, and nobody Nobody on either side wants that to happen. They did a poll of Democrats the ninth month. They had like nobody would nobody. So you have to remember. So you're in a very uh, good position. You have the power now of negotiation. We gave you something that was uh, really a fantastic thing that most people thought couldn't be done. And now you have to use it wisely. They're the extremists, not us. And we created the most secure border in U.S. history. We built nearly 500 miles of border wall. We got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. Remember when they said, oh, Mexico didn't pay. Mexico gave us 28,000 soldiers free of charge. That's a lot more than a little bit for the wall and a lot less complicated. I said to the president, you know, a lot of people are coming in from Mexico. The cartels are bringing in really bad people. You have to give us soldiers. No, no, no. No, no, I will not do that. I said, no, you have to. How many do you need? 28,000. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of soldiers. Pancho Villa, you know, with the bullets going on. Pancho Villa, these soldiers aren't politically correct either. Ours have to be politically correct. If, if our soldier speaks up to a person a little bit rough, they put him in the brig for the rest of his life, okay? It's not good what they do to our soldiers, I tell you. They don't get it. But we had 28,000 soldiers. So people say, well, what about Mexico? Did Mexico? But no, I said, much better. But they said, we're not going to do it. I said, that's OK. Don't do it. But you're going to suffer big consequences. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign legislation, which is on my desk, that for every car, you know, they took 32% of our business out of the United States over a period of 22 years. 30, not during my administration, nothing. Because I told people, you go there, you're going to put a big tariff if you sell it back in. That's what you had to do. And you would have kept everybody. But they took 32. I said, here's what you do. If you don't give us. 28,000 soldiers. I am going to put a 25% tariff on everything that Mexico sells into the United States, meaning you're not going to sell anything because nobody's going to want it. No, 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 you should not do that. I said, that's what I'm going to do. And they said, uh, you know, uh, in thinking about it, we would be honored to give you 28,000 soldiers. So we had 28,000 soldiers. Uh, Remain in Mexico. That was another one I got. Remain in Mexico. When these people come in, they come into our country, and they stay, and they never leave. That's it. And they're criminals, and they come in from in many, many times, many jails. They've been emptied out. And what I did is I got it. Remain in Mexico. Now the people have to remain. But the problem is that uh, Biden is giving it all up. He's giving everything up. Our medical stay, he gave up. Even the judge said, you don't want to give that up. Our country's going to be overrun. So they gave it up. But all of that was just the beginning. Here's some of the agenda that I will immediately implement when we become the — when we, that's you and me, we're all going to become the president of the United States, 47th president of the United States. And before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after I win the presidency, we will have that horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. It'll be settled. I know them both very well. Get it done very quickly, maybe in 24 hours. And I'm the only candidate who can make you this promise. I will prevent World War III. I'll prevent it. Not going to happen. We have a man right now who can't put two sentences together, and he's negotiating on our behalf with nuclear weapons. He's lost every country. Now we're enemies with Russia, with China, with North Korea, with Iran. I terminated the Iran deal. I got Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, and built — and built, actually built — our beautiful uh, building out of Jerusalem stone, right? Our beautiful old Jerusalem. He <laughs> can't put two words together. He said, what is there, too? No, but — we have a man who can't put two sentences together, and he's negotiating with people that, like President Xi of China, he's negotiating with people that are at the top of their game. There's nobody in Hollywood that can play the role of some of these people. These are smart, tough, 
killers. Macron of France, and you heard this story, maybe quickly, because I'm sweating like a dog up here. But does anybody want me to stop, or should we go forward? <laughs> Macron of France. Macron of France. He put a big tax. He wanted to put a big tax on our companies doing business in France. I said, you can't do that. I gave it to my people to do. They weren't able to do anything about it. Two weeks, they come back. Sir, he's uh, very strong on that. He wants to do it. I think it was like a 25% tax, some ridiculous tax for American companies. I called him. I said, Emmanuel, I like you very much. You're my friend, but you can't put the tax on. If you do, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put a 100% tariff on all of your wines and champagnes that I don't even like. I'm going to put a 100% tariff on wines and champagnes coming out of France and coming into... No, 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 Donald, you cannot do that. I said, oh, I can do that. You have 10 minutes to tell me. He said, I give up, and he took off the tax. That's what happened. What happened? I gave it to my geniuses. They couldn't... Sir, he's... There's no way we can stop it. It was passed by his legislature. To stop Biden's inflation catastrophe, bring down the cost of energy and become energy independent and even energy dominant. We are just, three years ago, we were energy dominant. We were energy independent, but we will drill, baby drill. We are going to be drilling and bringing it way down. To bring 10,000, yeah. It's going to bring tens of thousands more manufacturing jobs back to New Hampshire. We already did it. We made this place very successful. You know, anything that's good that's happening with the economy, it's only because they're running on the fumes of what we built. You understand that? They're running on the fumes, but those fumes can't last much longer. And they're just pouring money out. You know, all these crazy deals. This uh, Inflation Reduction Act, you know, $1.7 trillion, and it increases inflation. But they're running on the fumes of what we did, and uh, we did an incredible job. I will impose a border tariff on all foreign-made goods coming into this country. And I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act very quickly. That is, if India, China, France, anybody, Germany, they charge us, we don't charge them, because we had stupid people. And I started changing that a lot, but then we had COVID, we had to fix that mess. But all the gift from China. But reciprocal trade, if they're charging us 100% for a motorcycle, when we do a motorcycle, we charge them 100%. Right now, they charge 157% for a motorcycle. Harley would have to send. So what does Harley do? They have to go and build a plant in India, or they have to go and build. No, no more. No more. We were all set to do this, too. It was all set. We had a couple of stupid senators that didn't like it. One of them, coming from Pennsylvania, said to me, Sir, this is not free trade. I said, wait a minute, this country, I won't tell you which, is charging us 200%. We charge them nothing. Would it be okay if I charged them half, 100%? No, sir, that's not free trade. How about 50%? How about 25%? How about 10%? She said, no, sir, it's not free trade. I said, you're either corrupt or you're stupid as hell because it's crazy. So we're going to pass it. So if they charge us, if they charge us, very simple, we charge them, and it's probably all going to disappear. The Biden economic bus will be replaced with the historic Trump economic boom. I will immediately terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. Our country is being invaded. Following the Eisenhower model, we will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Got to do it. Got to do it. And I will use Title 42 to end the child trafficking crisis by returning trafficked children to their families in their home countries immediately. To stop the Marxist prosecutors who release rapists and murderers while persecuting Republicans, conservatives, people of faith, and me, by the way, I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical DA and AG in America for their illegal, racist, in reverse enforcement of the law. And we will bring back a thing called stop and frisk in our cities. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, 
and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content on our children, our beautiful children. Our beautiful children are being destroyed by these maniacs. I will keep men out of women's sports. It's very easy to do. And I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. Can you imagine? Can you imagine even having to say that? Think of this. 15 years ago, could you imagine? I will stop child sexual mutilation. Can you imagine having to? That's actually a part of my campaign. Can you imagine having to say that we're going to stop the mutilation of children? Just as I did for four years, I will fully uphold the Second Amendment. It's going to be in good shape. And I will fully secure our elections. They'll be done the right way. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID. That's what our goal is. But until then, Republicans must compete, and we must win. 2024 is the most important election we've ever had. But this is what we must do to restore our country to greatness. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition like we've never seen before. Our currency is crashing and will no longer, in my opinion, be the world standard if it keeps going like this, which will be the single greatest defeat of our country in 200 years. We lose the power of the dollar. It won't happen with me, not even a little chance. Just like Russia would have never invaded Ukraine and China would have never even thought about raiding Taiwan. They wouldn't have done it. I told them, you're not going to do it. If you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. We are a failing nation. I don't like saying that, but we are. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement, the DOJ, and the FBI. It's totally corrupt, and we're not going to let it happen. 224, 2024. We have no idea how important it is. It's our final battle. It's our final real big battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media. We will defeat crooked Joe Biden, and we will drain the swamp once and for all. The great silent majority is rising like never before. I mean, never before. It's never been. I don't believe it's ever been like this. I said it twice tonight. I'll say it again. We have never had anything like it. The spirit, the love, the passion, there's never been anything like this. And we went through 2016, and we went through 2020, and most people would say they were the most passionate. This is blowing it away. But we've never had anything like this, never before. And under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will put America first. We will make America. We're going to make America greater than ever before. We're going to make it great. It's hard to believe right now. Our country is at such a low point. We will make America greater than ever before. Thank you, New Hampshire. God bless you. God bless you, New Hampshire. God bless you all. Thank you.
few weeks with real generals. We have, we have a great military. But we're not going to let our military go woke, that I can tell you. But the real generals in the military, down a little bit, those guys are incredible, the, the way they Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the Macad TV family. Please like and share Macad TV. We love you all. Please support Macad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.